Hello and welcome everybody to another episode on my channel. So, I'm back with the Land Rover and there's a few bits I would like to get sorted out. Um, I don't think it's ever going to be sorted out completely but there's always stuff to do in an old Land Rover. Uh, one, of the, one, one of the things I need to do is upgrade the glow plugs. Uh, it, at the moment it has the original style glow plugs which are wired in series which means if one glow plug fails uh, all of them fail well they don't fail they stop working because there's a break in the connection so there's an upgrade kit which i have ordered and this then puts them in parallel meaning that if one fails the other three will work so this is something that will be a good upgrade the other thing is is in one of my previous episodes uh, you may not have seen. I have a switch for the glow plugs on the dashboard and also a switch for the ignition. So it's a bit of a um, procedure to even get the car started. You have to flick on the glow plugs, leave them for 30 seconds, then flick the switch off, then turn the ignition uh, switch on and then turn the ignition on. So it's a bit of a faff. So I have a new ignition switch which will solve that problem as well. So there will be two very good upgrades to this old Land Rover. Um, also another thing that I really need to do is that the car's been sitting here for two months and I've noticed, if you look underneath, I think it's just been leaking from just about everywhere it can leak. So. Um, I need to give that a bit of a clean up and find out where the worst of the leaks are and maybe if I can solve that problem. If not, I'll just let it leak and keep topping it up to keep the old girl on the road, you know? So, the third and, or fourth, should I say, fourth thing I would like to get sorted out is I also covered it on my previous video when I was doing the MOT, is that there is, I found another rust hole on the top of the chassis round near the back. So I would like to plate that up. Another patch on this very much patchwork chassis just to keep her going. So I'm gonna start with the glow plugs. Okay, let's find out what's in the kit. I haven't actually opened this yet, so I don't know exactly what's included. Oh, there's the new wires for glow plugs and this is the two and a quarter liter engine and the Land Rover is from 1975 so we have instructions okay I've just had a quick read through and it's pretty simple now for people who don't know what wiring in parallel and wiring in series is, I can give you a quick short diagram. So say these are our four glow plugs. So when they're wired in series, it means that the wire comes in as a feed, the plus, and then it goes to the next one, to the next one, to the next one, and then it goes to ground. And then obviously you have your battery here and that completes the circuit like that. So, if say this glow plug here fails, then the feed can't get to the next one and this one here doesn't get the feed back to ground because it's not connected. So, it breaks the circuit, they all don't they all stop working. It's the same as like your Christmas tree lights. So to get around that problem, with this kit they are wired in parallel. And what that means, so you have your four glow plugs like before and then you get your plus feed coming in and now what happens is that these pluses are linked together all the way through and the glow plugs are actually earthed through the block of the engine so these are all like mini circuits like so so if one plug fails the circuit still continues for the other three. I hope that makes kind of sense. Okay, if we take a look in the engine bay, you can see down here, 
here I've got our four glow plugs and at the back there there's another two and they're all linked together by this cable and as you can see like I explained in the diagram this one is earthed here and the feed comes off of this coil which is a resistor so that orange uh, sorry that yellow wire there with a the black stripe goes to the first uh, glow plug and then continues its way through so what the difference is is for this one example the live feed comes in and it goes all the way to the end of the glow plug which is a coil and if that coil breaks the live feed is broken which means it can't feed the 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 circuit is broken so it can't feed to the next one which means all four stop working Okay, I'm going to start by taking the easiest one out here. So I'm going to get rid of this negative return cable because that won't be needed anymore because like I said, it's going to actually earth through the engine block. And you can see here, it has a little bit of nylon here and that's what separates the um, positive to the negative. It insulates it. So first I'm going to take off this little knurled nut off the end of the glow plug take the wires off and then get a socket on the end of this and then pop it open. Okay, as you can see with that knurled nut off, you have the return wire and then you have this piece of insulator and then you have the wire feed to the next plug and then I can now get a socket on there and hopefully crack that open. Okay, strangely enough, an 18 millimeter socket fit better on there than the Imperial one, so oh, that came undone quite easily. So now we can take a better look at what I was trying to explain. Okay, with the two different ones side by side, you can clearly see what I was talking about with the coil on the end and when that fails it breaks the circuit and then here we have the more modern type that is more like a probe that will heat up so pretty simple stuff okay before I fit the new plug I, um, I like to use this copper paste just to put a really small amount it's like an anti-seize a small amount on the thread there just for if you if or when you need to remove it it shouldn't be seized up quite simple okay quite simply installation is reverse of removal and this time the new plugs take a 17 millimeter long socket. Now, as I have mentioned in many of my previous videos, just don't go too crazy when you're tightening stuff like this up. You don't need to go crazy tight. Just, you get to learn and feel how much is enough. Snug! 
can, as you can see here, there's just a nut that comes off and then you continue with the new leads. These obviously go in the bin. Okay, one thing that bothers me is I really don't like this style of connector with the plastic yellow on there. So I'm actually gonna put a, sleeve it with a piece of um, heat shrink, uh, which is black, that just looks a little bit nicer in this rusty old engine bay because these kind of stick out like a sore thumb. So I just got some heat shrink here. I'm gonna put it over there like that. Heat it up. And doesn't that look so much better? Okay, and the kit, obviously one of these leads is longer than the other three because this longer one that I've just put the heat shrink on goes from the first one to the resistor coil on the back of the bulkhead. So put that one aside for now and then I'll do this one and connect it. Okay, so quite simply, spin this off and then this goes on there and then goes to the next one so i'll crack on and get the other three out and go from there okay so i just sprayed the other ones with a bit of the old rusty rear and because that knurled nut was actually quite hard to get off the first one uh, so I just gave them a little squirt and hopefully they'll come out a bit better. Uh, I won't film me taking the other three out because it's just me bent over the bonnet trying to get them out. So, yeah. Okay, so the other for the other ones, it, you can't actually get a socket on there. So I've just gone and got a spanner to... Oh, it's quite tight, that one. Try and crack these open. And the other two at the back are even harder to get to. Maybe I'll take this air intake off to get a better access. Yes, access is so much better if I just, if you just take off this uh, hose clamp and remove that hose, put it back there, then you can really get good access to the rear two plugs. So all four are now in. Um, just to note that there is actually three lengths of these leads. Uh, because I realise that the gap between the middle two is actually longer than the gap between each end two because you can see one points this way and one points that way so this middle two have the longer lead and then the longest lead is obviously up to the coil there right at the back right just like that it's done so as you can see they are linked together and then finally they are connected up the back here to the coil that reduces the voltage to the glow plugs. Um, this wire here that is disconnected is the wire that goes to the ignition switch and in another video I will be changing that to eliminate the switch that I set up to override that to get the glow plugs working. So thanks ever so much for watching i hope you liked what you saw hope it's helpful um please like subscribe and leave a comment um but the question on everybody's lips is will it start <laughs>